So all you want to do is to write a great resume. The problem is all of the advice out there is so conflicting and you have no idea what to believe. What should you do? What should you not do? Well, today I'm breaking it all down and I'm debunking the three most common resume myths that are getting in your way. Stay tuned. Okay, so first off, I need to address the elephant in the room. Because there is so much conflicting advice out there, and it's there for a reason, and it's because reading the resume is a subjective experience. Every recruiter wants to see something different. Same with hiring managers. And applicant tracking systems are supposed to take the subjectivity out, but there's over 200 of them, and they all read them differently. Plus, a human, the recruiter, needs to set the parameters that the applicant tracking system is going to scan your resume by. Therefore, they are subjectively picking, same with the hiring manager, subjectively picking what they think is most important. So there is still a person programming the applicant tracking system for each job. And that is why there's so much information out there that just doesn't make sense. So how do I approach it? Well, I approach it from three ways. I approach it as someone who's read over 100,000 resumes and who was always thinking, why was I making the decisions? Because I didn't like my job, so I was a little bored. So I was trying to find a way to motivate myself. And I motivate myself by looking at people's motivations. So I was looking at my own, and then I was testing my theories with my peers. So that was that's one way I look at it. The second way I look at it is as a certified professional resume writer, as someone who writes resumes. How can we write a resume that's guaranteed to get you more interviews than before? So I look at it from that perspective. And then the third perspective is I look at the stats. I think about uh, and I research the stats that are out there, think about whether or not they make sense, how they make sense, how we can apply it all of that. I am an expert, but I look at other experts as well, and I parse it down into what I see makes the most sense for my different experiences. Because at the end of the day, I really want you to focus on this number one suggestion, and I want you to find a career expert you trust. And then you take the advice that they give that makes sense to you. And if you are following many different uh, career experts and they're all saying slightly different things, then you pick one and you unfollow the rest. Even if that means unfollowing me, I don't care because I want you to find a job you love. That's my main goal. And if it's needing someone else's help, then you need someone else's help. If you trust my advice, then I want you to unfollow people whose advice is not the same as mine, because what it does, it's not that I want you to ignore everything. I want you to ignore anything that gives you a lot of confusion, a lot of overwhelm, and that prevents you from moving forward and finding a crew you love as fast as possible. Okay, so that's my little soapbox speech. Now it's time to break down the three most common resume myths that exist out there. Resume myth number one. Resume myth number one. Your resume needs to be one page. Ah, uh, false. It does not. In fact, only 7% of recruiters, seven, seven, let me make that clear again, only seven percent of recruiters want to see a one-page resume that leaves 93 percent that don't care in fact actually 71 percent do not want to see a one-page resume they want to see a two plus page resume because what they care about is a resume that suits you and your career if that means it needs to take more than a page than two pages then so be it That is what they care about. What they want is your story on a page or two or three that makes sense for you, 
for the job you're applying to. So trying to cram everything on one page just because of some random 7% of individuals that kind of have a loud voice, because sometimes that's what we listen to, I want you to ignore them because they are not the majority. And we are working towards majorities because that's the way to get the most interviews and to accelerate your job search. So no more cramming it onto one page. You can have two pages, you can have three, okay? Just have your resume outline your career in a way that makes sense, again, for you and for the jobs you're applying to. Okay, resume myth number two. The bullet points in your resume underneath each job experience should only be accomplishments. It should be accomplishment heavy. It should be all about the achievements. Uh, false, because many roles require you to do tasks. Their responsibilities are task-based. And when we focus purely on accomplishments in our resume, we often miss those tasks. And here's the problem, the applicant tracking system, those individuals who are creating the parameters are often including tasks and task based sentences, responsibility based sentences in those parameters. It's not always just a key word. A lot of times it's also key phrases. And if, for example, you are looking for an executive assistant, administrative assistant type position, and you're talking about how easy you made the life of your person that you're supporting, your C-level, C-suite person or whatever, which is great. But if you don't mention manage calendars and their key phrase is manage calendars, you're not gonna get the job. Another instance, if you are a project manager and all you talk about is delivering projects on time and under budget, but you miss key phrases like project milestones, like creating a project framework, like maybe gathering requirements, depending on how your role is like managing the budget, not just keeping it under budget. If you're missing some of those key phrases, the applicant tracking system is not gonna rank you as high. Another example, if you are in marketing and you're talking about how you've increased brand awareness, which is amazing. You want to talk about it, but because you're focused on accomplishments and you miss talking about uh, re reviewing all of the marketing statistics, your social media work, your uh, digital marketing work, your creation of marketing campaigns, your collaboration with the internal or external clients to create this campaign, your collaboration with sales, all of all of these little things tasks that lead to the increased brand awareness. If you don't mention them, you may not get the interview because the applicant tracking system, again, won't score you as high as someone who has done it. So in sum, you need to talk about your tasks and your accomplishments. My favorite way to do it is you have a task-based section. Then you have select an accomplishments mini heading, and then you have uh, your accomplishments underneath it. And it also separates it. I love it. And if that sounds confusing, download my free resume freebies, my free resume templates. The link is below because in my two most popular and effective templates, it is easy for you to understand where the tasks go and then where the accomplishments go. And I think it's why we have so much success with these templates where we go from dry spells to instant interviews, often sometimes within 24 hours of sending out these resumes, you've gotten multiple, multiple, multiple interviews, like a lot, where we have gone from six months of a job search to two weeks from applications, interviews, and multiple offers. It's amazing. So download them. It'll make your life easier. It's down below. Okay. Myth number three. PDF is best. Oh boy. Who would have thought Word versus PDF would be so incredibly controversial about it is. Now I wanna cut 
through the clutter here of all of the conflicting advice on PDF versus Word. Now, PDFs are not best. That is false, especially when it comes for applicant tracking systems. They are not designed to read PDFs. Many pieces of information get lost when you submit a PDF to an applicant tracking system. This is not from my expertise. I get this from the expertise of HR professionals and applicant tracking system developers, and they say you have to submit Word documents. That is the best way to ensure that the applicant tracking system is properly reading your resume. After all, you don't want to put in all that work only for something as simple as submitting the wrong format be the reason you don't get an interview. So don't submit PDFs to an applicant tracking system. Now, when the PDF makes a lot of sense and why this is so controversial is because it is easier for a human to read of the PDF. And so if you know that you are submitting to an organization that does not have an applicant tracking system, you know it's going to an individual. And oftentimes you can tell this because you're applying to an email address. It's really as simple as that. Then submit a PDF because then it is easier for them to read it. I am also going to give a caveat. I hated PDFs when I was a recruiter because when I would go through, when I was not using an applicant tracking system, when I was using just email, going through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of resumes every single day, I did not like PDFs because it opened, it had to open up in a different window. I loved Word because I could preview it. And then I could make the decision to have my second read through if I was happy with that preview read through. And so oftentimes, this is showing the recruiters laziness. Oftentimes I would review the Word resumes first. And if I didn't find enough people to talk to then, then I would go to PDFs. So, you know, maybe just always submit Word. <laughs> maybe that's the moral of the story. Okay. So to recap, the three top resume myths that I want you to ignore, they are false. We have debunked them fully in this training. Number one, that your resume only needs to be one page. False. Two plus is actually what recruiters want. Myth number two, that they should be all about your accomplishments. False. Debunked. We want it to be a mix of task and accomplishments in your professional experience. And then myth number three, PDFs is our best, uh, debunked. I think Word is best, but Word for sure for applicant tracking systems, PDF for human readers. And like I mentioned, I would just download my free resume templates because there's also a guide that's going to walk you through how to create a resume that gets you lots and lots of interviews. The link is down below. Tell me how you use them. Tell me, are you surprised by any of these myths? Are you shocked? Fight with me. <laughs> if you disagree with anything that I said, please share in the comments. I'm open for debate and discussion. I thrive on it and I love it. In the meantime, I'll see you next week for another YouTube training. Have a great day. Take care.